This is the 100th episode of Jamie and Julia. And to celebrate, we're gonna make duck pate baked in its own skin. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. Now we're in the way to cook cookbook today from, of course, Julia. And yeah, this thing has kind of stuck out to me for a while now. So I'm like, you know what? Let's make it. I mean, look at that image right there. It's wild stuff. A duck pate baked in its own skin sounds rather exotic for the average home cook. But when you find that boning a duck is not... But when you find that boning a duck is not much of a trick and you know that a pate is dressed up meatloaf, why not give it a try? Well, we will. Let's do it. The duck. Five pounds of duck. And yes, it's been vacuum sealed. Last time I cooked with duck, it was the duck a l'orange. Uh, it was vacuum sealed. And when I cut the bag open, it was the worst smell I've ever... So bad. I know you're thinking it, but the meat wasn't bad. It wasn't rotten or anything like that. It's just when you're using vacuum sealed meat, sometimes it can smell. I've had that happen with like pork as well, or beef or lamb. Because of the turkey episode, I know better. I'm not cutting it open over there. Whoa! Okay, good news, it doesn't really smell. Let's pat this sucker dry. And what we gotta do here is debone this duck. And I'm feeling pretty good about it because I deboned the turkey and all was well. Just stick with that can-do attitude, no fear, and we'll get the job done. There's a slash in the skin, and that's troubling because I need to bake this thing in its skin. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a patchwork there, I think. Or, and we'll figure it out on the day. We got a neck, innards, liver, gizzard, heart, whole collection of knives here that I could possibly use. I think I used this one first last time. Right through the spine here, neck to tail. Okay, so before we get going any further today, please allow me a minute to give a big thanks to this episode's sponsor, AG1. Sue, for the past few months now, I've added AG1 into my morning routine. Even before my coffee, so that's big news because I usually have coffee IV'd into my veins every single day. But with AG1, I get a big boost energy that makes me feel really good and lasts me throughout these long, buttery Julia Child recipes I'm making on the regular. What? And for the first time in a long time, I'm cutting back on my cup of joes. Now one scoop of AG1 is a blend of 75 ingredients that can replace up to nine health products in one, including multivitamins, minerals, probiotics, and more. Actually, I really like the taste of it. It's green, but it doesn't taste green. It's got this like, to me, it's got the citrusy pineapple thing going on. With a more serious approach to my exercise and my diet, and with the addition of AG1 here, I have felt more focused. My stress has reduced. It's too bad though, it is too bad that AG1 doesn't improve my cooking. Head over to athleticgreens.com slash antichef to get started on your first order. You'll receive a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3, K2, and five free travel packets. Okay, let's get back to the episode. One side at a time, separating the skin from the meat and the bones without piercing it at all. Then we'll do this side first and we'll move on to the next side. Let's separate the ball joint of this thigh here. Gotta look for that wing ball joint. Where is that wing ball joint? It's right there. So that needs to be separated. Done. Okay, so this is the breast meat now. So be careful. You know what? I learned a little fun fact last time. I was cooking with duck. Uh, yeah, it's not white and dark meat. It's just breast meat, thigh meat, leg meat. I didn't know that before for some reason. That's why we do this show, to learn. So I've cut both sides down to the breast as far as I can. Now I just need to lift the carcass and separate the skin completely. All right, those are the breasts. Chop off the ball joint of the drumstick ends. 
Okay, we gotta pull the skin sleeve inside. There's the bone. Where's the other skin sleeve? Here's a skin sleeve. Arr! Remember that slit in the breast? There it is right there, it's unfortunate. All the bones have been removed. The meat, as much as I, I could muster here, uh, even took off some miscellaneous feathers. That's the skin. Okay, carcass has been officially removed from the breasts. There we go. Cut the breast meat into long strips. No word on how thin they're supposed to be. You can kind of see those strips in the corner of that photo there. They are pretty thin. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Bowl me. Thank you. And let's get the breast meat into this. Sprinkle in a little salt. Pepper, a little bit of thyme in there. Allspice. Okay, so we have the options here. We have options between quarter cup of brandy or cognac. You know, with 100 episodes of this show. We're gonna go with the cognac. So there's a quarter cup of cognac in with, put this in the fridge. Bring the skin back over here. There's no room for everything. Cap back on the cognac. So next up, I gotta remove as much of the leg and wing meat as I possibly can. That's all the meat I can find right now. Is there anything else? I feel like maybe there's a little more meat on the skin that I can scrape off, but besides that, I don't wanna damage the skin, so I gotta be careful with how I'm removing the meat on it. This is a bunch of fuss for nothing, I think. Okay, so in the little goodie bag of, oh uh, yeah. Um, I need a bunch of things. I need the gizzard, which I believe is... That's the liver, that's the liver. That's the heart. I don't have a gizzard here, I have a heart. One right here, and one right here. I could trade these for the gizzard if someone has a gizzard. Uh, well, no gizzard today. So before I started making this show, before all of this, I would always think about that movie, Julie and Julia. And if you haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. Based on a true story of this woman, Julie Powell, who sadly just passed away actually. And she challenges herself to cook all the recipes in Julia Child's first cookbook and do it within a year. And she's blogging about it. And that blog becomes a big hit and it turns into a book and then it turns into this movie, Julie and Julia. Whenever I would watch that movie, I would always think, why isn't someone kind of like recreating that idea, but on YouTube? Seems like it would be perfect for the, for the tubes. So yeah, I had my own cooking channel and I was making cakes and desserts and pizzas and you know what, I had enough of all that and I wasn't really learning much anymore from it. And you know, the whole point of this channel originally was just to learn how to cook. And I wasn't, I was just kind of fiddling around with cakes. So I needed a change and Julia was calling. Two and a half years later, 100 episodes and an audience that has grown from my mom <laughs> and some to all of you. So I, you know, the amount of information and things that I've learned from these books and Julia, <laughs> unrivaled. So, you know, that's my little spiel. The show's not going anywhere. There's no end in sight. It's been renewed for multiple seasons until I run out of recipes or it jumps the shark or you stop watching. So what do I have to do here? Eating pistachios. They're in the recipe. So I'm gonna need my, in the food processor goes the leg and wing meat as well as the heart. I could add the gizzard if I had it. I don't have it unless you have it, you can share it. And half a cup of onions sauteed and a tablespoon of butter. We gotta chop. It's chopped. Bowl me please. Thank you. 
And you guessed it, let's get this into here. I gotta add in a pound of ground pork. Mixing animals, isn't that something? You think about how wild that is, that this part of a pig is gonna be cooked with an entire duck in the duck's skin. That's crazy. Okay, so, whoa, <laughs> okay, that's one teaspoon. What the f is going on here? That is a ta teaspoon and a half. Okay, I didn't realize I opened it like that. That's two teaspoons. Half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of thyme, quarter teaspoon of allspice. It's a large clove of garlic that has been pureed. What does it mean to puree garlic? I should have probably just added this into the food processor with everything else. All right, Google, help me out. So I know what I need to do. And <laughs> maybe uh, I'm gonna use the garlic press first to get it all through there and mince it all up into tiny pieces like this. And then what I'm gonna do is just add a little hit of salt. That is way more than a hit, my friend. Way more than a hit. Just a quick hood of salt. And I'm gonna take the knife and I'm just gonna spread it all out together. Preheated to 350F, because it's almost oven time. I'm sure you could push that further, but I am happy with that. So now I add two eggs and mix that all together. Should I do it with my hands? No. Charlie. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm gonna do it with my hands. Saute a spoonful of this to check for seasoning. It should seem over salted and over spiced, 100%, since the seasoning will be muted when the pate is served cold. Beat in the liquid from the breast strips. Okay, the filling is officially done so. It's moving right along here. I have a loaf pan. She says a eight cup loaf pan. I measured this out, it's seven and a half cups. How does that happen? Who sells a seven and a half cup loaf pan? Okay. So I need to oil it. Oiled, okay, this needs to be oiled. Bon <sighs> Too lazy to get anything else. Just oil up the loaf pan. Cool. Okay, once it's loyal. Can you see that? That is spinning and it's been doing that for like five minutes and I don't know what's going on. Why is that spinning? Now that I've caught on to what it's doing, it's slowed down, but that was bizarre. We're gonna take the duck skin flesh side up into the, uh, whatchamacallit, loaf pan. Unfortunately, I have this huge, devastating slash right through the heart of my skin. I'm gonna have to make do with that by just being a little creative. I'm gonna kind of overlap it a bit. I got holes in my skin from the legs and the wings where hers doesn't look like it does in her photo. But this is how a duck is, so I'm gonna have to accept that. Spread over a third of the filling. Lay half the breast strips over the filling. So I have a half a cup of pistachios and I took the seeds off, but I still have to peel the skin off them. So it's just all that green goodness. So if I rinse these pistachios and then I bring them over to the fun spot right here onto this towel, do something like this. Yeah, the skin comes off, which is exactly, exactly what we needed. And then we got to add a double row of pistachios, double row of pistachios. I cover with half the remaining filling, the rest of the breast strips. Liver? 
The liver? Where did the liver come up? I don't know how I missed that. The liver. So I'll add the liver. I just didn't know. As requested, here is the liver. Pistachios. And the rest of the filling. <laughs> this is wild. Oh, I think it broke me. I think it finally caught up to me. Bang the dish on the table to flatten any air pockets. Uh, There's a record for washing my hands with this recipe. So what I need to do is lay three bay leaves on top. We're gonna lay four. I'm not driving. Fold the skin over. This is probably the most messed up thing I've ever made. Oh dear, oh dear. Okay, so this is coming off very easily. Oh. The pate is ready for baking after you have covered it with a sheet of buttered foil and a lid of some sort. That's a lid. Baking this in a bain marie, which is the loaf pan in the baking pan and in the baking pan, boiling water. It's gonna be in the oven, of course, too. I'm gonna bake that for one and a half to two hours and the oven's at 350 F. All that's left to do is sterilize every square inch of this kitchen. That has to happen. I gotta check the temperature of this brick and it has to reach 160 degrees F. Once it does, get it out of the oven. Okay, so I have let this cool just like this for around an hour. We can take a little peek, can't we? Just to see what, what everything's, what's going on here. Holy sh, that is all fat, that is wild. So weigh it down with a pan or a board in a five pound weight. So the lid weighs exactly five pounds, but it's not resting completely perfect on this thing. So I figure if I take this pizza pan, that's gonna be acting as my board. So when it's cold, cover and refrigerate for a day or two before serving to allow the pate to develop its full flavor. We can do that. For an hour like this, then in the fridge. Wash your mittens. Two days later, what we gotta do, oh lovely. Doesn't that look nice? <laughs> How appetizing. Firstly, let's get this on the heat. Pour out the fat and the juices. Unmold this thing with, uh, I'm gonna palm it. That skin right there is as far away from Julia's photo as possible. That does not even look like the same thing. This just looks like raw skin. So I'm gonna brown this really quickly under the broiler, making sure it's not under there too long because I don't want it to warm up or anything. But it's like, come on. I gotta stop doing that because it's just gonna heat this thing up even more and we're not gonna get it the way Julia's is not. So what I'm gonna do is follow through with eating this thing the way it looks now. To cap off this recipe, there is one final note from Julia. Before decorating, you may wish to brush the surface with a coat or two of glistening aspic. I don't have any on hand. And if I did, well, I wouldn't. I've changed plates to the charcoal plate to hopefully bring out whatever color is in this pale looking duck. Order up. Let's cut it open, take a look on the inside. Maybe, you know, hey, we, at least we got pistachios. successful inside. I mean, it looks like pate. Okay. Don't judge pate by its skin because once I cut it open, it was as advertised for sure. Uh, I just, I really enjoyed it. I liked it on its own. I enjoyed spreading it on some leftover baguette that I had that's been in the freezer for months and I just thought it out really quickly because I forgot to pick up a baguette, but it was great. Pistachios were a really nice touch. You could pick up on the ham in there. So uh, the one thing that was missing was the duck. I can pick up on the duck. I'm joking, of course it tastes like duck. 
and the liver was prominent in there too. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. All right, I, I'll be here all week. Thank you very much. The liver was nice too, and I'm really glad that I picked that up in the last fleeting sentences of this recipe that you're supposed to add the liver, because that could have been easily missed, honestly. Pleasantly surprised. I am pleasantly just, I'm glad that all worked out. 100 episodes is a fantastic little milestone, and we'll do this all again at the next 100. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. <laughs> so everything's cleaned up. We got the heart. And it's the fridge. Let's go say hello. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's been a it's been a wild ride. <laughs> yeah, everyone else says hi too. Well, I'm just gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna unplug you. So, cut the cord. So let's move on. <laughs>